We are the keepers of our future and our past, and the names of our heroes past and gone, on whose courage, strength, and wisdom the North Shield stands. Teach their stories to your children, to our children, till their names are written in our blood and bone. Welcome to Griffin's Tale. This is a series of uh, interviews that we are doing to hear about the stories of the people of North Shield. I'm your host, uh, Reed Kieran, and today's guest is Siegfried. Siegfried, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, okay, uh, my, uh, my name, my full SC name is Siegfried von Kohlenbach. I'm, I'm titled as a knight and a duke. I started the SCA back in 1983, so that's a lot of years that I'm not going to do the math on. Um, uh, most of it's been spent here in Yara. Um, I have lived in a few other places. Um, and I've primarily been focused around the fighting, but uh, uh, being being put in the in the up in the you know, in the forefront, uh, reigning a few times as king, I've I've found other interests that uh, have inspired me, and uh, many other people have inspired me. So I don't know. My, my life's an open book, your majesty. <laughs> we, uh, yeah. I I always like um, I always like to hear how people uh, got into the SCA. Um, and I know a lot of interviews do that, but I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm super curious about what, how did you come about? Oh, well, um, I, I was kind of a, a, I was an introvert in high school, like many of us were, you know, um, and, uh, spent a lot of time, you know, just away from a lot of the school activities and, a bit of a truant, if I if I could if I could confess that, um, but you know my time where I got to really just enjoy myself was playing Dungeons and Dragons, and then I was having a conversation with one of my friends about it, and he says, you know, there's some people that do that for real, and I'm like, with fireballs and magic missiles, and he's no 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 dude, people really fight, they put on medieval armor, and they, I was like 17 years old, and uh, so he told me about when it was, and I got on my little 10 speed bicycle, and I went down to the campus to the, the fighting practice where it's, it's been there it's ever since, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's our, our little fighting practice site. It's been there for all 30 some odd years that I've been involved. And I pulled up there and I got about 30 or 40 yards away and hit the brakes because there was two guys in medieval armor beating the crap out of each other. And I just stopped and stared and my mouth hung open. And I'm like, do I really want to do this? yeah, I really, really want to do this. This isn't, and so, yeah, yeah, of course I started out as a stick jack, but that's, that. I'm glad I, got, I ventured into other areas, but man, I, I, I slowly crept over there and like people are in the SCA, they motioned me over and they wanted to show, they, they wanted to explain these things to me and all that, this young kid. And, uh, and I walked up and watched the fighting for a little bit and then everybody introduced themselves and there was a young man sitting there on the stoop and he says, oh yeah, and this lady over here, that's Bertie. And she reaches over and just punches him in the arm for, for, for uh, referring to her by that name. And that was how I met Bertai, who was uh, uh, North Shield's first queen. Um, and quite honestly, I needed something. I, 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 I'm the, the son of a single parent mom and I didn't have a lot of, she had to work all the time. I didn't have a lot of discipline or direction and the SCA gave me my first really good taste of that in my life and uh, pretty much saved me from uh, from what might have not have been a great life. I, I, I love the fighting so much um, and then the person that was training me initially, a gentleman by the name of Korok Starbear who's no longer with us, um, he found out that I was kind of a truant from school and he threatened to keep me from learning how to fight if I didn't go and graduate high school and Went on to finish that and a few more degrees and uh, and the, that showed the power that the SCA had over me. You know, it's like, I, this is a place where really good, wonderful people are. They're educated, value education, value research, value learning, all that. I, I that's, that's the value I still find it today and it makes me happy to raise my kid in this group. Did the person that you, that introduced you to the SCA, did they ever join? Uh, that person was peripherally involved for a while. Um, and then 
Yeah, and then he kind of flittered away. But no, I, I don't think it was a person that, that is still, that I, I know is not involved anymore. I don't even know where they would be these days, but they knew about it. Um, and I and I can probably conjure up a few names given the time of who they who they would associate it with, but no, I'm sorry. Did you did you have somebody like a, a comrade then, uh, or did you just blaze this trail on your own? Was it? Oh uh, no, I I'm the product of of a lot of people's generosity. <laughs> you know, I I um like the the gentleman Korok Starbear who took me in. He was uh I mean he really was he understood that I that that I was you know didn't have a my, I didn't know my dad at that point and uh, and so he assumed the role of a father figure and he led me out. He, he, he led me into the martial arts in the SCA and, and, and acquainted me with concepts of, of chivalry and honor and the chivalric virtues. Um, my, two of my first big mentors in the SCA were uh, 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 Giles and Shaba um, here in Yara Vettler. Um, and they taught me the ways of the SCA and, and, and not just, you know, the, 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 the bureaucratic details of how the SCA works, but like theories behind, you know, the, the peerages and 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 how the the, the knights and and the chivalry interact with the people and the people's obligations to one another it's I mean they, they, I, I learned pretty much almost all of the concepts that I now still hold as as as, as truths from from Giles and Shaba and a lot of the folks early on in Yara Butler um, yeah, I mean, sorry go ahead. No, I'm just feeling a little nostalgic. Um, I, did, I was worried this was going to happen. I was going to get nostalgic and get a little too wordy. But uh, um, uh, other mentors, uh, probably my, my partner in crime for the longest time in the SCA has, was and continues to be uh, uh, Baron Adrian from here. Um, he, is, uh, he was the one that actually got me really invested in the concept of North Shield when it first popped up here when we were still a region, not even a principality. Um, he, he and his, uh, Jocelyn, his wife, uh, they did a lot of work in the early days uh, towards the principality and uh, got me hooked on it. Could you, could you maybe elaborate a little bit on that? It's kind of something that we're interested in knowing, like how did, how did North Shield come about and who were the players and what, what did you see? Well, there was players, I mean, there was, there was people all over the place that were really interested, especially in the principality. There was a lot of, uh, we were kind of, uh, I don't know, it was kind of hard to be here before we were even a principality. I mean, not that it was hard to participate in the SCA, but little, we weren't really, it was hard to feel like we were part of something bigger when, you know, there are, we had no royalty coming through here. For my first, uh, like for my first like 15 years in the SCA, we, uh, we were part of the mid-realm. We weren't a principality or anything like that. And uh, we would get, and most of the royalty came from the, the eastern part of the mid-realm, uh, you know, Columbus, Detroit, all those areas. And, and very rarely did we see royalty out here. I and mean, we only had a couple of big events a year with uh, Boar's Head and North Scoban's Twelfth Night and, uh, and, and not much else. And there wasn't a lot of reason for royalty to come out here. So it was kind of hard. We, we, we had... There are people that were certainly peer worthy um, that were not gonna, ever going to get recognized, and that was kind of rough. So, when the it, from my impression of it, the uh, the the principality was something that was met with you know a, a lot of enthusiasm because then we would have our own royalty to do these sorts of things, yet still being part of the mid realm, which was a, it's the mid realm's a great kingdom. I mean, it, they do things with a lot of polish and flair. But the personality of the mid realm in their population centers is very different than here. Um, I, 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 I can I, I, I understand some of the questions you might want to ask me later on, and I can probably elaborate a little bit more on the differences in the personality types and, and, and all that stuff. But uh, it was it was not a lot of fun to be here before we were a principality. You know, it's like it's like to go anywhere you'd have to travel like, you know, to Detroit or Columbus or who knows where just to go to an event where you could get recognized, especially people that wanted to like, they were trying to get recognized in the martial community, like myself. I, I had to I had to travel all the time and it was just backbreaking when folks at those big events in Ohio and all that in Michigan were only going a couple hours to an event. We were traveling like 10, 12 hours back and forth just to get a chance to get recognized for what we do and maybe attract uh, some, some chivalry. And in Gary Vettler, we only had one person who was chivalry Master of Arms, Master Thorbjorn, 
Um, but he was later on in his years. He was still a good fighter, but I mean, we were looking to learn how to be high caliber tourney fighters and all that stuff. And there wasn't a lot of directions. We pretty much self-trained. And that also might be the reason we have a lot of obscure fighting styles. Some of the, like myself, my Florentine is, is not, you know, and, 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 and uh, Duke Raito's style of Florentine, things like that. These are things we were all self-taught on because we had no real mentors here. And so then the principality came along, the idea of the principality and everybody was enthused because then there was going to be a coronet tournament and we were going to be able to train for that and, you know, get our own princes and our princes would get their recognition and they could bring that back to the people from the, from the, the, from the mid realm. And then we, then, then we got a little bit farther along and it looked like we were going to go kingdom. That was, I think there was a little bit more, my impression of it was there was a little more uh, division on as to like how enthusiastic people were to become a kingdom there was many people i think a, an overwhelming number of people that would probably wanted to go kingdom but there was also a lot of people that really liked their identity as mid-realmers um especially among a lot of my brother chivalry at the time they liked being mid-realm knights and i can certainly sympathize with that you know because there was something very mid-realm was very very selective back in those days you would they'd only make a one or two knights a year sometimes maybe three or four tops a year but and, and it's, it's different now but back then there was something very special about being a mid-round knight and a lot of them worked very hard to get that recognition and so leaving the mid-round and not being a mid-round knight anymore was really really rough on a lot of us you know there's a uh, one particular moment um uh, at, at Pen the Penzik before uh we became kingdom and uh I was with all, you know, all the North Shield fighters and there was a bunch of us knights that were walking off the battlefield after the last battle that year at that Penzik and we got to the road and somebody said, it might have been me, I can't remember who said it, but it was, uh, let me just say, this is our last, this is our last Penzik is Mid-Realm Knights and everybody slowed down a lot and walked a lot more slowly off that battlefield. There was a lot of size and then we just did it. But, you know, we knew what our duty was at that point. We had to become knights for the new kingdom and all that, you know. And I mean, I was, I was, I was, I, I really liked the idea of the kingdom when it first came around and, and I wasn't as resistant to it. But I know a lot of my, my, my fellow chivalry and some other peers were, you know, I, and I get it. And I, and I don't begrudge them at all. It was hard to break away from something that they worked so hard for and from such a polished kingdom. But I think that changed over time. People really embraced what North Shield is, you know, because it does, there's a different personality type here than there are in a lot of other kingdoms. So, um, how long, not too much. No. How long, how long did it take you then to become a knight, if you don't mind my asking? Oh, it took me a bit. Um, I was, uh, I, I, I was 13 years in fighting uh, before I got squired. Um, and around here, I was still, I mean, I was, I mean, here and when I traveled out to the Eastern part of the mid realm, I was doing pretty darn good in tournaments. You know, I, I, I mean, it was, I don't know for certain, but I, I can tell you that, I mean, if I had lived in the mid realm, I'm pretty sure I would have been picked up as a squire in my, probably my, you know, fourth or fifth year because, you know, I was really, really into it. And so about 13 years in, um, it had, about that point, um, uh, Duke Komar and Duchess Lisa from the mid realm, uh, I think they had both retired at that point. I can't really remember, but they had done this. Th I don't know how they accomplished it, but they did this thing called the Royal Progress during their reign in the mid realm, where they went to every single SCA group in the mid realm, including North Shield. In, I mean, that's every single weekend they have to go to an event during their was, entire reign. Was Eldamore Mir still part of mid realm at that time? Um, I believe, I believe they were at that point. Yes. Um, I'm not hundred percent certain, but I still, I believe they were, um, they might've been a principality at that point. I couldn't really tell you, but, uh, Comar and Lisa did all this thing. And then it kind of, I think that kind of turned a few light bulbs on in the mid realm. And then we started seeing people making a better effort to come out here. And one of those people that made that effort, uh, for, you know, in, for my benefit was, uh, uh, Duke Finn, who was uh, who came out here in his first reign, and he showed up at a at some tournament. I can't remember what it was, and you know, I I, I just showed up, you know, 
late to a t late tournament as I typically do. God, there was a bear pit tournament. So, it, I mean, you know, I could jump in at any time. I went out there and went uh, 19 fights undefeated in the bear pit, walked off the list field and then threw up into my armor bag because I had the flu. <laughs> and, uh, and apparently Finn, by Finn's judgment, that that's the guy for me. I, I like that kind of personality type. And he, uh, he squared me about a half a year later, and then uh, 18 months after that, I got knighted. So, i not saying I came to him a complete package. There was definitely things I was missing that he gave me. Um, but, I mean, my fighting skill was something that he didn't have to do a whole lot of work on at that point. So, and there was, and, and the same for uh, my, my squire brother at the time, uh, Tristan Von Isaac. I mean, he was also just crushing it, you know, as far as a fighter. And uh, he, Finn picked him up too at the same time. We got squired together and we got knighted on the same day, but we were, I mean, we were typical of this place. I mean, Duke Wright was another one. I mean, he should have been knighted years before I was, but there was just not a lot of, there wasn't a lot of, there wasn't a lot of notice of what was going on out here in North Shield for a while. So, and then, then just the floodgates opened. I, I remember uh, uh, Duke, uh, Duke Edmund and, 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 that's just Kettering were on the throne from the mid realm. And when I was prince, uh, territorial prince, um, uh, uh, Kettering came out for, a, uh, for, a, for some event. And we had already known what Windworth was at that point. She was just a, a godsend. I mean, her, 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 her bardic abilities. And I, I just, I asked, I asked her, I'm like, hey, could you, uh, would you mind singing at dinner tonight when her majesty's here? And she, she's so cute. She was so nervous. She's like, I don't know. And I'm like, oh my God, you inspire the entire area with, with your, with your vocal abilities. You know, the, you know, shield my kinsman and, and savage daughter and, and all that stuff. And, and she sung savage daughter at the, at the uh, feast that night and Katarin just tears coming down her eyes. And it wasn't long after that, that uh, Wendrith got uh, laureled. So. I mean, once they started realizing what was going on out here, um, yeah, it did pick up pretty fast. That's nice. Yeah, I remember the first time I heard Savage Daughter and everybody starts to jump in and that was really awesome. So yeah, yeah uh, can you- It's a beautiful uh, song. I love the fact that there are mundanes out there that, I mean, I, I guess that's not the term we should be using these days, but there's people that in the modern world that are, are, are recording this song, having no idea of the SCA roots of it. It's beautiful. Yeah. Yep, yep. You uh, you mentioned when you were a prince of the territorial. Can you talk about that a little bit? What was that like? What uh, what was your thought process? What did you learn? Just some stories. Oh yeah, I I mean there's. I think that was a. I mean, I guess I could say that that, that was a time where we where we started to understand our own personality as 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 an area. Um, I mean, obviously, the, the, I mean, we were a, a principality of the mid realm, and they they were a great mentor as a kingdom. I mean, as far as as how the SCA should be done and 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 whatnot. But we had our own personality. We're a lot more folksy out here, you know. Um, you know that we don't stand on ceremony as much. You know, people here feel free to come up and talk to their royalty anytime. I get really confused when I see peer fear out here because it just it's not something that. You know, it's not something that that's that's that is part of my understanding of the history of North Shield. Um, but it was very interesting. I mean, the magic the magic hour for then was uh, when uh, the first coronet tourney tourney that uh, the, the, the Daffod and Gwyneth won. It was uh, it was really fun watching that happen. I mean, I fought in the first coronet, man. I really wanted to win it. I was really hoping to get you know get near the end. But I I went out in the in the in the, in, the, in the semis, I think, and. Uh, and uh, watched Daffod win it. And then I watched the crowd's response to Daffod and Gwyneth winning this thing. And it was different than any mid-realm court because this was ours, this was our thing. I mean, this is, this, is, this is our first set of royalty ever. The first in what was going to be a long line of royalty. We all knew it, you know, and, and they, were, they were a great first couple. I mean, they were very polished. Their, 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 their SCA game was polished as far as, you know, you know, having their, their personas all dialed in, all their accoutrements, you know, they look great. Um, and they very well spoken um, in courts and whatnot. And it was just, 
I, it was nice seeing the realization break over all of us, myself included, that this is our stuff and we are going to make our own thing. We have great, you know, we have a great guardrail set up by, by the, the mid realm that, 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 that showed us how to do a lot of things. And now we were going to take that thing and we were going to make it in, you know, we're going to mold it to what, what we were out here. Um, and I think despite the fact that I really was kind of hoping to win that first coronet, I think Daphne and Gwyneth were the right people to do it. They really were. Um, they, they had it down. Gwyneth, I mean, obviously I'm a big fan of Gwyneth. So I fought for her and won a crown tournament for her, but she's just the thing that she would do things at spur of the moment that would just resonate for years. I mean, the princess's sleep is, is, another, is, is the prime example of it. You know, just what do we have as a prize for the rapier fighters? And Gwyneth just took her sleeve off and said, this is it, the princess is asleep. And now it's how many years later, how many decades later is it still a thing, you know, and something that is fought for with, with a lot of enthusiasm. You know, um, uh, and it was, I mean, it kept going on and on. And I think one of the things that was really nice was that a lot of the really good, big personalities got up on that throne around here. I mean, watching, you know, Leaf and Astrid and Nicholas and Mantra and, and, and just all these wonderful personalities that helped shape us because this is who we were. And then these people were not guarded at all they were they just expressed their personalities up on that throne and that really helped solidify north shield's personality as to what it is right now you know it, it, lots of, lots of humor we are a very humor-based kingdom you know so um is that different than you remember the rid mid realm being are they more yeah i i guess i'd have to say that there 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 is and i'm not saying that they're not that, 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 that humor is not an element in the mid realm there's a lot of funny things going on but it is a little more structured, a little bit more. This is my impression. I don't want to insult my my mid realm background and all that kind of stuff. I had a uh, I had a very interesting conversation with a uh, uh, with a, a friend of mine, a uh, Duke Dog from the mid realm, a while ago, and uh, we were talking about uh, about styles of reigning. And he was he made it pretty clear to me that that you know it's like he didn't wasn't the biggest fan of my me being trying to you know laugh and joke and, and make people laugh while I'm up on the throne. And, he, and, and I said, well, okay, well, that's me. And that's what North Shield seems to like. And that's what North Shield is going to get from me. And I notice a lot of other people use that same kind of formula, you know, they try to make people laugh and enjoy themselves in court and things like that. And, and, and the mid realm to their great credit are, are, are the people that, you know, acquainted me with the concept of magic moments and wow, do they do that? Well, I mean, they really, really do. Um, but and magic moments have a part in it. But the, I, I like the connection with the people, and and the best way to do that is through laughter, I think. And so, this conversation I had with Dog, he's like, he says, he tells me it's like, you know, it's guys like me that make guys like you possible. And I'm like, yeah, but after a guy like you, they're waiting for a guy like me. <laughs> and so. Uh, I mean, we have a uh, dog and I have a great relationship. I love him a lot, man. He's a good dude. Um, but there is a there is a different way to do it. They 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 they're they're very much dialed into their ceremonies and doing things, just so. And out here, I think we're a little more free flowing. You know, I, I hear laughter in our courts more than anything else. I'm uh, I I mean, the things that I remember about your reigns uh, as as king are the humorous stuff, the mighty fist, the exploding cows. I mean. All yes. that stuff was amazing. Is there any, uh, yeah. sorry, go ahead. No, 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 please ask the question. Oh, well, I was just wondering if there was any like um, defining magical moment for you that really like solidified like what it meant to be North Shield or uh, maybe more North than Shield. one or whatever. I don't, I'm not trying to pigeonhole you, but I just. Well, my, 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 my first acquaintance with magic moments, uh, um, it, it illustrated like the, 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 the human element in the SCA. Uh, I think the first magic moment that I ever, I, that I ever was cognizant of witnessing was uh, Talmar in Iceland's reign many, many, many years ago. Um, uh, Iceland was uh, terminal with cancer and she was doing a reign for the mid-realm. And up to this point, you know, the SCA was great and it was fun, but it was, you know, I still had the Dungeons and Dragons concept in my head. I'm role-playing. And that completely dissolve that, that, that illusion in my head that this is role-playing because there's a lot of it that's really real and watching their Penza court 
um, where she was up there speaking and giving, you know, giving honors to people and people were just bawling and, and, and but they were also happy at the same time. And it was just this raw emotion constantly throughout Penzik, but that court was something that was very special. I mean, it was the most packed Penzik court I have ever seen and probably will ever see. Um, and, and all Penzik, I mean, it was, it, the entire event rallied around her. And that was, that was what acquainted me with magic moments. Um, and so as far as one for North Shield, well, I think my magic, I, I haven't had one in that exact same vein, but I'll tell you my, my most profound magic moment of North Shield uh, was all the stuff around the first coronation. You know, it's, it's, it was, it was, it was hard to like personalize any of it because there was, it was involved all of us, it involved our whole family and everybody was emotional about this thing. I mean, I was fighting to keep it together the whole time because it was just such a powerful time for all of us. Um, I think the night, I remember the night before first coronation, I was, uh, we were at the, at the, at the site and Bradai and I were running around and I was a, a maniac and she was trying to calm me down <laughs> and I was, and they were, and uh, I was, we were trying to make sure we got our lines right and our blocking right and all the elements that we were going to put together. Um, and and uh, Master Jurgen, Master Sir Jurgen showed up and uh, he had a, uh, he had a, uh, um, uh, the, the crown for the first, <laughs> and, and, and we were, and he's like, well, should we go try it on? And I'm like, no, I can't put that on yet. <laughs> I'm not king yet. That's crazy. I can't, that, that's, it felt sacrilegious. And, He's like, well, we got to try it to make sure it fits so it doesn't slide down over your face. And I'm like, okay, okay. So we went back in the bathroom, you know, first time I ever put on the North Shield crown, first time anybody put on the North Shield crown, as far as I'm aware. And we were back in a bathroom at the site and he's like, okay. And I'm just, I'm sitting there shaking and put it on. And I'm, it just fit pretty close to right. And I just looked at it in the mirror and I was like, bug eyed, like, oh my God, this is so real. And and so I, I got it off and I said, okay, it's, it could be maybe just a slightly looser, but I can't put it on again. I can't do that again. That's, that's too much. And, uh, and then the next day we showed up and, you know, every once in a while I peek out into the hall and look just to confirm for myself the fact that this was as big as it was. It was like 2000 people there. It was ridiculous. And uh, I was walking my line, going through my lines over and over again. And I invited my mom and my dad have never been to an SCA event before. And I invited both of them. And, uh, and my dad showed up at one point and then, uh, and somebody told me about that. I'm like, well, make sure he gets a good seat. And then I was going through my lines one last time and somebody came up and said, your mom's here. And I just started crying. My mom raised me and this is a big thing. And it was, it was far beyond college graduation or anything else that happened in my life at that point. I was, my mom was there to see this happen. I started bawling and then pulled it together, went out there. But the that day was filled with so much crazy. I mean, there's a lot of the peers can tell you this because they got a front row seat for this, but they brought the rock out, that big North Shield rock, and they put it up on stage with a forklift. And uh, during the ceremony, you know, we're up there, or prior, just prior to us, prior, prior to the ceremony, the, 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 their majesty's mid-realm are up there and they're releasing all the, all the, uh, all the peers from their, from, from their, their O's to the mid-realm. And they, and everybody would, place their knight's chains or their medallions or their, their, their coronets on the rock. And when we got up there and turned around. We're sitting there looking down at this rock that had all the livery, all the hard earned livery from all of our friends sitting there. They're not wearing it. You know, they're not peers of any place right now. I mean, all this stuff is right here in this, this point of limbo. And and then when you put the hat on and you look down and you know, you, down the rock and you just kind of understand that how much of a transition this is for everybody you know and that kind of helped me because it kind of kept me from thinking about my own role in this and getting too nervous or getting too overwhelmed by it because I realized how much it meant to every single person in that room and then they came back up and the peers all took their first O's and the territorials came up and took their first O's and then they called the populace up and that's the second time I lost it that day it was it was like there was like everybody came up and this place was 2000 people everybody came up and they all just flooded the aisles and people that couldn't get into the aisles were touching people across the seats and all that stuff and 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 uh mikey asked are you ready and i and i, and I said 
yeah, man, you better start this or I'm going to start crying all over the place. <laughs> and and he t- we talked about it years later and he says, yeah, I, he says, I was fighting to keep back the tears too. It was just an amazing scene. We, I mean, uh, these people couldn't all fit on the stage and the stage was huge there. And so we went down with everybody and it was just like this sea of people all staring at me and reciting the oaths. And I, I just, it, it was transcendent, man. I couldn't even, I mean, if you maybe people want to say that we're play acting, man, try to try to find an experience like that in the real world. I, I I challenge anybody. You can't. That was just overwhelming. You know, this giant family all together at one time. So that was, I mean, I mean, probably the most potent and prolonged magic moment I've just spent in the SCA. You Absolutely. Know. Yeah, I'm curious. What about um, fighting for a crown? That first one. I mean. What sure. was that like when, like, like preparation? Then when you realized you you, you were going to be the first king. Um. I well, honestly, I I didn't realize I was going to be the first king until probably about five minutes after the tournament was over. I still didn't really understand what was going on. You know, it was obviously overwhelming. Um. I just, I, I decided I want to do this. At, at, you know, probably it's you know, not too long after they announced that they were, that, that we were going kingdom. And I'm like, well, I, I, I was looking at all these great people in there, you know, that they were going to be in it. And I'm like, I see a lot of great qualified people to be our first set of royalty. And I'm like, but uh, I mean, I think that I could be one of those people that could do a good job too. So, you know, let's maximize the odds of having a good first set of royals and I'll throw my hat in too, because I, I, w- I knew I would do the work, you know, um, and so I started training about six months before the tournament. And it was, uh, my theory on it was to, uh, um, there was a lot of people out there that, that, I mean, we're so spread out, you know? I mean, I don't get a chance to fight everybody all the time. So becoming, you know, devising game plans for all their individual styles and all that stuff was something that was going to be kind of hard to do. I mean, I was kind of, you know, I was kind of a techno nerd at that point. So I had video of a lot of these fighters and I'd study and I'd analyze that and all that, but there was still so many unknowns. And there's people that I never even had that much experience with. Like uh, the, uh, Lars had just moved to the kingdom and he was fighting that tournament and I didn't know hardly anything about him. So my theory was, is that if I'm going to have problems technique wise with these folks, I'm going to just, I'm going to, I'm going to do something that I can control, which is uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to become the best athlete I possibly can. I'm going to be the fastest, the strongest, the best cardio. I'm going to be as fresh in the last fight as I, as I, as I was in the first. That's something I can control. And it was also the time the mundanely that I had been, I think it was, um, I, I, I kind of fallen in love with another, the only other uh, uh, athletic activity at the time was uh, mixed martial arts because it was just starting out back then. Um, getting into prominence and there was a couple of gyms here in town that I was training with so I started borrowing some of their training uh, their, their, their 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 training regimens from them as far as is how to how to, uh, how to how to prepare for an event like that so you started started running hills and doing all this crazy stuff and mining my nutrition and and uh, and 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 learning about concepts about peaking athletically and all this stuff so that's what that's that was the preparation from six months out until about three months out, and then it was from that point on, it was uh, it was just gorging myself on fighting and doing ridiculous things. You know, um, you know, I had fight, I had to fight at least three times a week, plus you know, an, you know, an hour of pell work every second or third day. I mean, I was just I, fortunately that happened early enough in my life that I didn't destroy my, my body doing it. But we did crazy, like uh, uh, my 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 squires at the time uh, in household. Uh, Gunther and a square mind Zartan. He doesn't play much anymore. Um, and, and, and Newton, and a bunch of guys. We, I, I rented out a, 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 a local community center uh, once a week to have our special practices where we would do strange things like these 30 second drills, like where I'd start fighting somebody and regardless of where we were in the fight at 30 seconds, I got a new opponent, you know, so I was always fighting somebody fresh every 30 seconds. We did that until that that didn't kill me anymore and then I did then we then we started doing it again with me wearing five pound ankle weights and stuff like that you know I've never been that much of an athlete since then I I, I don't think I could do that to myself again but I wanted to be that good that fast so all this preparation and things like that and plus endless film study of all the opponents that I could that I could come across 
you know, I mean, I was, I, I, I'm not the best planner. Sometimes I'm a little disorganized, so I have to kill it with volume, you know, so just all this extra work of just endlessly watching videotapes, endlessly doing this, endlessly doing that. And then by the time I got there, I was so oversaturated with all that, that I was in a perfect state of mind for that tournament that day, which was just uh, nothing, nothing phased me. And I could focus on the things that I like to do for fun, you know, so that's, the the what they the the uh, the infamous uh, leaf licking story um, where uh, one of my fellow combatants was uh, a Viscount Sir Leaf and I've been playing with him for years you know and we've been buddies you know locking each other's in Porter Johns at the at Warriors and Warlords and stuff like that and pranking each other all the time and just walked up while he was uh, you know it was about a half hour before the tournament and I walked up and he was talking to a couple of people and I just stood next to him and stared at him like hey what's up man hey how you going he kept talking. And I'm like, and I just reached over and I licked him from the jaw all the way through his ear. <laughs> Went back and said, yeah, butterscotch, they're right. And I walked off. He's like, what the, what's wrong with you? You know, but that's what, you know, I've always, I like that kind of thing because it, it puts, it puts me at ease. You know, I, I, I like laughing. I like joking. I like making people laugh and all that. But it also, these are my brothers. These are my friends. This is my family. I can't have animosity towards these people, man. It's got to be. I got to come into these fights liking the people that that, that I'm fighting, you know, because if it's if it's not that eh, fighting is not not as much fun. It's not the same thing, you know. And I mean, the only the only person that I that I uh, didn't know real well in that tournament was Lars at the time, and I was trying desperately try to talk to him and chat with him before the tournament and stuff like that. And we had a few common interests and all that stuff. You know. He was definitely, you know, if not the toughest, one of the toughest opponents that day. And, and, uh, and of course, what was the very first fight of that tournament was me and him. So, <laughs> but yeah, the, the athletic part of it really worked out for me. I just becoming a really good athlete. And, and, and you know what, it's, I wasn't the only person that, that saw that kind of thing at that time too. You see a lot of people cross training um, it, it, for, big tournaments these days by running hills and doing all kinds of crazy workouts you watch the mid-realm you know the the, the mid-realm unbelts team doing push-ups you know you know after their practices and stuff like that and you know it's kind of a common thing but that tournament was it, um it was it worked out pretty good i mean it's like they're all friends and my, my 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 best way of fighting is is you know without thinking without emotion just reacting to what's in front of me and and everything kind of played in my favor at that point because I'd, I'd oversaturated myself on all the fighting stuff that I wasn't worried or questioning myself about what was going to happen versus any specific opponent. It was, just ended up being, uh, you know, going out there and, and knowing what they were probably going to do and knowing that, uh, that I was going to have a set of reactions for it and just let it flow. And I think the one time, the one time in that whole first crown that I got out of that element was after I got all the way to the semifinals and you know, got a little arrogant, like, man, I haven't lost a fight all day. And then I was kind of came up against Lars again. And the first round was sword and shield. I'm like, I'm just going to go get him. Ooh, that didn't go well. <laughs> he clubbed me. Um, so, you know, walked out the list field. I'm like, okay, let's get back to the whole humility and, and, and not thinking too highly of myself. And let's see how that plays out the rest of the day. And the finals couldn't have been any, any more uh, perfect for me because it was Tarek. And I'm a huge Tarek and Feeney fan. I love those two. Um, they are, they are, they are, I mean, like if you, if you were going to, if you were going to put somebody in the, in the Encyclopedia Britannica with the classic SCA couples, it's those guys, they do it, they do everything right, you know, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, I, I tried to tell them that and they're like, oh, shut up, but I mean, I think they do everything right, so having Tarek as my opponent in the finals for the first crown was just a dream, and we were joking with each other while we were fighting and having a good time, he, he's the same as me, he, he's, he's hell-bent on making people laugh, you know, and, and so that was the, the, the finals for me were magic, you know, and on top of it, knowing that whoever won between me or him, you know, I was, I, the only thing I was worried about is that Nurshia would, 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 would get less of a first king if I won it, you know, because he was, uh, he was such the complete package, man. And so when I did win it, it's kind of like, you know, there's, I, I looked to Derek and Fina as kind of a guy, you know, like how they do the SCA, that's how I should, you know, I should incorporate a lot of that in that first range, you know. And I also had Bert I with me, who was kind of the same cloth, old school SCA. You know. It was a wonderful tournament, you know. I mean, it was the, the crowd, you know, just explosive after every fight, you know. But, yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, the, the, 
one funny story, if I'll interject a, a funny story in about First Crown. So I told you about how I all was always, uh, um, you know, I was, I, all, the, all the stuff I went through for six months. I mean, I lived, breathed SCA fighting for six months. Did nothing but it. I was completely prepared. I got there, you know, the day of, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, I, 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 I came into the hall focused, you know, my mind was right, everything was right. And then, you know, you watch the list boards flipped over and, and my, my, you know, my crew, my squires and all my, in my household knew that, the, you know, that who my tough fights were. And they knew that Lars was at the top of that list for tough fights. And when that first board flipped over and said, Ziegfried and Lars, I'm like, okay, this is what we came here for people. Let's get it done. You know, I walked over, you know, my, 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 my pit crew of squires that were just awesome, you know, demi gauntlet on, demi gauntlet on, sword, sword, you know, this, that, they were just lighting me up and then they're then like, okay, and they handed me my helmet and I'm like, okay, let's get it done. Took my helmet and slammed it down over my head. I'm like, okay, wait, wait, there's something wrong. I, I can't see. And I take my helmet back off, turn it around the right way, put it back on. That's what happened to me right before the very first fight in the first crown. So, Probably put you in the right mood, right? Like, okay. <laughs> yeah, if, if 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 humility is my is my source for uh, for for my my fighting ability, man, then that that was a big dose of humility. <laughs> so, but that was, and then of course they all laughed at me, which is exactly what I needed at that point. <laughs> right, right. I could see that. Yeah. Uh, what was it? Uh, what was it like, um, I mean, establishing the kingdom? You know, you were had your hand in the laws and the, the peers and what was what was that like? Um, well, it it was a really reassuring time because Bernai and I um we, we came to an agreement early on um that you know this 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 is a collective, this kingdom is a collective of some really, really smart, really, really hardworking people. And so we really didn't want to be kind of like the autocratic kind of king and queen. We wanted to be, you know, we'll, we'll sit at the head of the family table, but it's a family table, you know? And we got to, I mean, like the, 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 the day after the uh, first crown, we had a, uh, we went to our first Stellari meeting, it was still a principality Stellari meeting, but it was, we went to a, after the first after the first crown. We went to our first Stellari meeting, and uh, and we sat down. And <clears throat> there's a lot of the uh, came, uh, the principality officers that we didn't necessarily know real well, but we I think I think we made it clear. I, I think we actually made a statement that's like, look, you guys know your jobs. You've been doing really well. You know the direction that you've been pushing for things. But we would love to have some input in some of this stuff, and 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 we'll and we'll try to interject what we can. But we want to see you guys you know, you guys keep working on the things that you've been working on because you've been working up to this point too, just like we have. And from that point on, we would go and we would like every, every event we go to for the next, you know, cause it was, cause the next six months was, uh, it was, it was kind of a weird rain because it was, is it was like we were on, we were on point the entire time, even though we were heirs to what we, we jokingly said, we were heirs to a concept because Norsha wasn't a kingdom yet. Um, but we would, uh, Every event we would go to, we would hold, you know, some time where we would sit and just take advice from people. And we had a really big one at Warriors and Warlords that year, the, the, they called the Heirs Vigil, where anybody could walk up and give us advice about the kingdom and the direction of the kingdom and things like that. And so that was a wonderful experience. Not only did we, you know, reaffirm the fact that there was a lot of really, really smart people in this kingdom, really thoughtful people. Um, but it was also just, I learned a lot. I mean, this is just listening to all the individual peers talk about their concepts of this and that, and what, what the SEA made to them and, and, and the stories they would tell about how that, uh, about how they, how they formed their ideas. And it was just, I loved that time. You know, that, that, first, uh, that first six months was wonderful because, you know, there wasn't a whole lot of pressure to do anything. Um, and there was, uh, as far as like, you know, official business, but there was a, an obligation to sit and listen to the people and learn learn what they what they thought their their what they thought and what they hoped their kingdom would be, and then just doing enough to keep. We had a, a one of my squires, uh, Robert, um, was uh, always by my side, man. He was he'd take down notes on everything everybody said, so we wouldn't miss out on anything, you know. Um, but it was uh, I learned a lot. 
I learned a lot and I learned a lot about, I mean, I, I, it was reassuring because my, my, my concept of North Shield proved to be true. You know, it was just a enormous collection of really smart, talented people. Um, and, uh, it, day by day, my confidence grew that this was going to be awesome, you know, just because of, of the people that were involved in it, the people that were invested in it, you know, and they were, and they were not afraid to speak their mind on it. We had, we got a lot of advice that was completely counter to what we wanted to do, but we sat there and we listened to it because it was important because it was, yeah, we were going to be first king and queen, but it was not our kingdom. It's everybody's kingdom, you know, and that's the way we addressed it. You know, I mean, everybody's experience is relevant, as relevant as our experiences, you know. You know, they paid their fee at the door and you know, they put their time in you know I, I just i loved it it was wonderful just sitting there listening to people talk about the sca for hours on end you know i never i i never really got bored of it <laughs> to be honest with you so um what? sorry no no please i'll, I'll <laughs> prattle you ask anybody i'll prattle on unless you stop me man but oh your majesty sorry there was there any um any stumbling blocks or, or uh, miscues or anything that you, you like, like, oh, this thing go right or whatever. And I'm not, I'm not trying to, I'm just like, I'm just curious about that time. Like, and if there wasn't any. Um, there was, uh, um, there was a few things that, that, that were challenging um, early on. I know that, uh, that one of the things that, uh, um, uh, Bradai was uh, was was uh, really uh, looking forward to make making some period oaths. She was she was not necessarily a big a fan of some of the mid realm oaths because they were very um, there's the elements of Tolkien and fantasy novels and and, and whatnot because that's they were they were oaths that were created back in the 70s and so she tried to create very period oaths and then we pitched them out to people and most people liked them except for the chivalry. The chivalry did not like changing their oath from the mid-realm and so they were they were and they were pretty vocal about it um and so there was a there was some back and forth on it and and uh, I, for me personally it was a really uncomfortable position to be in because i knew that that i was doing you know a, a good thing overall for all this kind of stuff but then you had these nights that were like this is what we want and i'm like oh how do you jive those two things and she was really cool about it in the end she she let it go and we and we and we just changed a bit of the oath to make it more a little more nursery but it still ended up being mostly the mid-realm oath because they a lot of the guys i mean all the guys that were there that took it the first time were former mid-realm knights i mean much the same as all the other peers i guess but still they were the only ones that really did so that was a challenging thing but you know she and i had a great dialogue and we would we were very honest with each other and we talked about things talked about things like that um there were some other things too that were not you know not nearly as is as you know the outcomes weren't as, as great. We, um, I think one of the uh, first orders of business we had at one point um, in one of our events is we had to banish somebody, you know, and then we found out that the, that the circumstances around that banishment were highly flawed. And so we had to reverse it and we did very openly and very vocally to admit the mistake that was made there. And it, I don't know, it wasn't a mistake that any individual person made, but the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the facts didn't play out the way they were and we were at least wise enough at that time not to sign the banishment paper so it wasn't made official because when things started getting a little weird we just kind of backed off from that and then we uh, that that 12th night that year we very publicly proclaimed that this was was not not this was not this was not, this was not a, a worthy banishment this is something we were rescinding irrevocably you know, you know just, that was that was kind of hard too um and I, we learned a lesson there, you know, it's like, you know, maybe because everybody's emotions were running pretty high for mostly good reasons. But, um, but, you know, it's like when you find out something like your first rain there and there's something that might have happened that was worthy of that sort of thing. You're just kind of like you want you want to you want to charge into it right away like you're charging into everything else. And, and then taught us a little more taught us a lesson, especially me, a lesson about restraint, you know, because I'm not the best at that sometimes. Um, You're the, uh... But other than that. I can't think of a lot of the things that, that, that were like tremendous miscues on our part. There were things that where we were, we had to correct things, but we were certainly willing to do it. You know, I mean, we wanted to, it was more important that we got it right than, 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 than everybody did what we said, you know. What were the, uh, the like the things you thought were like, I'm really 
things you were proud of, things you thought were, you know, exciting, you know, things that are like highlights from, from that time? Oh, highlights from that time. Oh, there's uh, it's, it's just a, it's, it's a, it's, a, it's all highlights really. I mean, it was just such a magic time for people that didn't live through that, man. It was just, I mean, everybody was buying this, every event people went all the extra miles in every area. I mean, the, 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 you know, the, the, the feasts were wonderful. The, I mean, like you, the smallest groups were going all out on, on all these events and things like that. And people, I mean, people were upping their game in so many different ways. I mean, fighters that have been, you know, been fighting the, in the same stuff for years, all of a sudden came up, started coming out with new Gambazons that were black and gold and, 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 and people were really buying into this. And it's like, everybody was infected with, 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 with the North Shield Kingdom thing, man. It was, they were, everybody got so far behind it. And it was just, it was like, you'd go in there and you just watch the, this, this, this blossoming uh, in this king, uh, in our, in the kingdom of, of people really just getting so deeply behind this, you know, I mean, I'm not saying that we had anything to do with encouraging people to do this, but we were pretty open about the fact that, you know, do your thing, enjoy, you know, you know, we, we're, we're looking to you to, 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 to help create this kingdom as far as, you know, its personality and what we do and all this other stuff. And we encourage people to be very participatory in, in, in embellishing the, the, the kingdom, you know, in any way they could through bardic arts or through uh, create, creating things or, or public displays and all this kind of stuff. And boy, they didn't hold back. Everybody went all out on this stuff. It was just magnificent to see, you know, it's like, it, I'm sitting here trying to play a role and a lot of times I felt like I was the audience, you know, and probably more true than that. So, um, specific stuff. Wow. I, 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 you know what? It's really hard. I, I, I have more memories of the time, our time as heirs in that first time than I do the time we actually reigned because sure. that was just a blur, you know, and we were, we were working so hard for a lot of this stuff. I mean, the, the work we did prior to stepping up, was uh you know we 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 would you know, we would meet you know every you know two or three days a week we were putting about like you know, like about 30 40 hours a week in just meeting and you know we're looking at the laws and the award structure and things like that we were uh we had the example of Eldermere at the time that uh they created a bunch of awards without names behind them and then we watched what we perceived to be a lot of the, a lot of things up there, them struggling up there because their wards didn't have names. And then there was a lot of problems over the names and who was, you know, like, and, and the rains were so, sh the rains were only six months. So, you know, it was hard to get any, any work done that lasted. So we just decided to go all out and, and, and name all the awards ahead of time. Um, that, that, you know, I mean, basically like the three tier structure, you know, AOA, GOA um, and whatnot. Um, so, but that was all work that was easy to do. The rest of the work was where you had to be on point all the time and you get to an event and all of a sudden you have to be conscious of what you're saying, what you're doing, you know, because you are, my role is to be, you know, in this grand play that we had here, I was, I had a, I had a role of being king. I had to be, behave like a king because that was everybody's expectation. We were having a great time here. And if I didn't act like a king or at least make a good effort at it, it would diminish people's experience. So that much focus on that, I don't remember a whole lot else other than just being insanely impressed with everything that everybody was doing. You know, all those, that, those events during the first rain were packed. Every single one of them was packed, you know, and it was just, and, and everybody was getting into it, you know. Uh, there was, uh, I mean, it had started to like even first crown. I mean, just the, the 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 night after the first crown tournament, you know, there's the hotel was like in this had this huge atrium, um, in it, and people had people's hotel rooms all had balconies that, that looked down over this giant atrium, and we walked in from the tourney hall, and in this huge resonating atrium, people were singing North Shield songs as we walked in, you know, and it was just echoing through there, and it was just like Brady and I both started just hyperventilating, you know, like. Oh wow! You know, and they everybody had hung their their banners over the railings and stuff like that. So you're just looking up, like three, four stories up, with all these balconies and people singing on them and banners on them, and it's just like, oh my god, this is so real. You know, it was uh, it was just fabulous. You know, and 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 
we still have a lot of that. I mean, and, and I see that a lot of the kings and queens working really hard to keeping that, that flame burning all the time, you know. They work really hard. Uh, you guys you guys have a crazy job. I can't even believe this. <laughs> um, what, I'm very uh, proud of you guys, the Royals. Well, appreciate that. Thank you. What, did, what speaking of the the time over time, what did, what is it, what did, have you noticed anything that's changed? Anything that you you like that you see, or anything that you don't like that you see, or just like what's your impressions about where North Shield was and where it is now? Kind of what what do you think about that? Um, well, I mean, if you uh, depending on how far you go back, but if you're going from the time right when we became kingdom. Um, the only thing that, you know, is frustrating is something that's really beyond our control is that, you know, you know, when Norsha became a kingdom, there wasn't not that much competing with the SCA as far as what people would want to do. And since then, you know, I've seen other things take little chunks out of participation, things from, uh, is, there, there was a time where we noticed there was a dip when World of Warcraft was getting really popular as a video game and then steampunk, um, took down so there's and these days with the you know you know instant access to everything on the internet and stuff like that there's a lot of things that are vying for the attention of people that would be in the interest in the sca or already are interested in the sca so that's one thing that's that that concerns me but i still see a lot of people that wouldn't give this up for anything you know i mean because you it's actually hands-on it's tactile you get I me mean, gripping your sword and getting your blisters or you know, the, the, the things you make as an artist and all that stuff, those are things that you can't duplicate in other areas. But we are still really competing with a lot of other interests out there. And, and it always gets me concerned. I, I, I don't have as much of a concern about coming out of this pandemic because listening to people online, like, oh my God, I need to fight. I need to do things. I need to do SCA stuff. So when it comes back, it's, it's I think it's going to, I, I think that time you guys will have will be pretty robust, man. Yeah. No, I, I really do. But uh I, the things that I do like is that we haven't really lost our character at all. It's really, we are, we are very familiar with her, each other. You know, I, I've, I've lived in other, I lived in Atlanta for a little while and uh, that was, uh, that was a cool experience. I mean, they're, they're, they're definitely, uh, there's similarities to the mid realm. They, they, they had a lot of pomp and circumstance and, and just everybody's, you know, dresses immaculately and, 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 and you can't mistake who the kings are and the queens are. They they stand, you know, head and shoulders above everybody else. I mean, almost literally, because there's some really big people out there. Um, I and it's it's like, well, Liz, uh, my wife Liz, Duchess Liz. Uh, she's uh, she was she she gave me her her impressions when she first came here. She used to live in uh, um, oh uh, Ethel Mark, and. Uh, she was blown away by the arts community here because at the time there in Ethelmark, she said it seemed like that things were a little bit more proprietal, like people would make a cool thing and then they would like, this is my cool thing, you know, and I made this cool thing. And here we're like, I made a cool thing. Let me show you how to make the cool thing, you know? And they were, we were very open about the teaching and, and that sort of thing. It's like, and there it's like, I, I you know, my, my, my impression is, is that I see, I see some of the stuff like you know, that, you know, where like people are, wanting to climb the, the hierarchy of the SCA and to do it. And then they, and they, and they, it's almost like there's a certain level of competition to it in other kingdoms. And here, everybody's like, you know, here, reaching down the ladder and grabbing you and pulling you up, you know? And that's, that's, I mean, and it's, and it doesn't matter who, who's, who's who, you know, it's like, I, 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 I'm very happy that new fighters come up to me all the time and just start chatting me up about fighting and things like that. And they, they want to learn something. And then they, there's no peer fear where I see that, still in other kingdoms you know where people are like little oh i don't want to talk to the duke oh uh, come on man just come up and talk i mean you know i i, I told my my squires a million years ago you know i said uh, i started pointing out it's like you know you never have you never have fear of the peers of anybody because you know like pointing out there i'm like yeah that, see that guy he's uh, he's an out of work construction worker duke so-and-so over there he he's, he's he sells cars you know that kind of stuff i'm like these people you know, give them all the reverence they're due for their accomplishments in the SCA, but don't deify anybody, you know, and I, and I think that's a very common way of looking at things here in North Shield, you know, so I, I, I think that works to our benefit, where we all are, are so much more inclusive, you know, and we're, we're quick to bring people into the fold and, and nurture their interests, you know, where in other places you have to, I think people have to work a little harder to get included in some of those things.
at least that's my impression. I could be wrong, and it's not in all kingdoms, but just some of the some of the things that I've seen in some of the places I've lived, you know, and some of my experience it is kind of like that. You know. Is there anything that you wish that you could do, like that have in the SCA that you would like to be like, oh, this is something I wanna wanna next thing I'm next thing I'm trying for. Oh boy, I don't know. Um, I mean, I haven't given a lot. I mean, there's there's certain things I'd like to do, you know, just on a personal level, you know, just, uh, I mean, I don't, I, I'm still trying to remain firmly committed to retirement from, from crown tournaments and stuff like that. But, you know, I also, you know, looking around and I see there's uh, plenty of individuals out there that I would think would, should get a shot at being royalty. And, and if opportunity came up to get them back up on the to get them on the throne i'd love to do that at some point because i mean there's so many people that i mean it's when i fought for Berdai, i i said i'm i'm i, I said I'm, I'm not necessarily doing this because you deserve to be queen i'm i'm doing it because my family of north shield deserves to have a queen like you and there's there's other there's other people out there like that that, that north shield deserves to have some really good royalty and there's people out there that may not get a shot or whatever you know and and if I ever do fight Crown Journey again, I want to fight for those reasons, you know. Um, other than that, I just want to really up the, up, up the game of the fighting as much as I can right now, because that's the one area that I know best, and there's a lot of things I think I can still offer the fighters out there as far as how to, you know, how to, how to, how to really excel in what they're doing. I'm just kind of, kind of, kind of curious, like, what, uh, what do you think that we could do? I mean, fighting is, is, is your interest and, and mine too, but and, and we have other people we interview, we'll ask them what they think they can do to help improve that area of interest. But since fighting is your thing, what is, uh, what is something that you think that we could do to help North Shield improve its fighting community? Um, well, it, there, there's the age old thing of, 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 of getting people together to actually fight, you know, and I, and I, I am still kind of troubled about uh, the, uh, the, the, um, uh, the fact that the, the numbers are down in the west part of the kingdom and that makes me a little sad you know because i mean there was a time when there's a lot of really good fighters out there and there's still are, there are great fighters out there but the numbers are down a little bit and, and all that and that's just the north shield such a darn big kingdom you know it's hard for people to i mean it's like you know you go from one end of the kingdom to the other and and and, and out east and it's like four hours here it's like 17 you know um so that's kind of a hard thing to get past um I think that uh, finding some ways to get to recruit more people to get into it would be helpful as far as, because things are always better with more fighters. You know, I'm not, I mean, it's, it's, that's not that hard to do, but uh, stoking the passion of the people that, that are involved in the fighting. So they stay with it and they, and they get all the, the, the their full enjoyment out of it. Uh, Duke Branos in the mid realm is just phenomenal. He doesn't have anything left to prove to anybody. I mean, he's widely known as one of the top fighters in the, all of the SCA um he's reigned he could go into any of those tournaments and and take any of them you know be king again he doesn't doesn't interest him but he is passionate about improving people's fighting he hosts these huge fighting practices you know where you know before the before the pandemic and people i mean like his whole backyard is dialed in with different types of practice dummies and practice equipment and things like that and there's a lot of so much mentorship going on over all over there um trying to find something like that where you can establish areas where there's where people can learn and that's the thing that scares me about the west end of the kingdom right now and some other areas that are a little more isolated is that for people to really learn higher end fighting they have to make some they have to travel and 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 the, and the argument has been made and and, and it was to a large degree rightfully so that well sometimes those teachers are gonna have to travel to the fighters um but reality sinks in you know people like for myself i'd love to go to an event every weekend but up until the pandemic i was in the bar business i mean i my weekends are where i, I earn my living and so that shoots it for me and then the fact that the kingdom's so so huge you know it's hard to get people to go to that so i think that being a little more cognizant of the fact that that's the the dynamics here is is important I, i've I'd like to see, you know, more events crop up that are closer to the center, the geographic center of the kingdom, as opposed to the population center of the kingdom. 
um, so that the people on the, in, on the west end of the kingdom aren't left out, you know, and, and are want for some, some good training. And there's guys out there, you know, Eric and Schroeder and all those guys out in the, in, in the west end, they're busting their butts to make it happen, but it's hard, you know. Um, so finding ways to like creating creating events or creating certain situations where people can learn some you know from from mentors that can teach them specifically what they want to know not just how that person fights but how they themselves can fight better and there's a distinction there you know it's you don't you know i mean like there's i see a lot of people like, like knights will go to some place they haven't been before and they'll teach the people how they fight and it's like yeah that's not the way to get people to get better in my opinion it's like it's, it's it's taking time to learn the fighters that you're training and seeing how you can take their gifts and make them better fighters with it. Like, I mean, I that's another thing. Like when I was starting out, people want to teach me sword and shield. I hate sword and shield. I I don't like it. I can get good at it, but I'm not. It's not my thing. You know, uh, shields are heavy, I'm, and I'm and I'm not into that. But uh, so I was like, I was starting out with like sword and madu and Florentine things like that, and all I would, people would just poo poo me all the time. You know, and I'm like. I would rather have somebody teach me how to use these things than tell me I need to change what I'm doing, you know? And, and that takes, and that, what that takes is a lot more interaction between the mentors and the fighters. And somehow that's, I think somehow I like to see that accomplished to a greater degree. I mean, everywhere in the SCA, but for North, in North Shield for that matter, because we are, we, we're, we're a, a kingdom that doesn't have an enormous population. But we have an enormous land mass. And so that's a challenge. I think that, that I think, uh, uh, the, the, the martial community needs to stay focused on at least have some kind of a plan for that or keep working on a plan for that because i know that if you put me in a room full of 20 fighters that want to learn something give me give me several hours and i can teach everybody something that will benefit them but we've got to find that room and we got to find those hours yeah well you know. i appreciate the your passion obviously you've had it for a long time but i mean of course, that's near and dear to my art too. So, hopefully, that can yeah. uh, be rectified someday. Yeah. Um. Uh. I guess we let's let's finish up with one more question. Uh, I want to thank you so much sure. for the time and 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 sharing the stories. And um, I want to let you know that I I appreciate you as a, as a as a leader in the as North Shield. Like when I first started, um, you know. You know, you were among the people that was like, oh, look at this guy. And my friend fought in that first crown tournament um, and I got him ready as best I could. And I was like, you know, just hearing the stories about, about how, you, you know, you guys did and, and the, the, how you comported yourself and like just the magic of the, the big rock, you know, that came out. I was out in Shatton tour when that came around and, you know, it's all magical to me. So it's, um, it was very, it's a very awesome thing to be part of, of North Shield, but also just, you know, just to, you know, hear some of the stories and perspectives of other people. So it's very much appreciated. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's, it's a kind of, I still feel like a little kid, you know, in this whole thing, you know, it's like people, it's like people, like, you know, I mean, I, I, you know, I watch you guys reign and it's like, you know, I, I love what you're doing, you know, and it's just kind of those things where I like, I like the role of being a knight. I like being, your man, I, I, I like being Her Majesty man. I, I, I like that, and I like the deferential thing, and, and, and it makes me feel good to support you and things like that. And and then I, I I assume that role in my head. And so when people say, "Oh, you're a leader," I'm like, "Of what? I don't. What are you talking about? I don't want to be." But uh, it, it's it's my family, you know. And I think that's it's something. It's I'll tell you. I, I if you if you haven't seen it already, but I bet you have. Um, one of the cool things about reigning is you get to see the best of everybody and everything. And that is just eye opening, you know, having people greet you and, and treat you so kindly and all that. And, and it's, 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 it's a wonderful feeling. You get to see the best of everybody's work and the best of everybody's everything, you know, and, and it's that stuff. Thankfully, I mean, I, I'm very thankful that things like that, you know, it's still a great power to humble me you know, and, and all that stuff. Cause that's, I think that's the strength of North Shield is, is everybody's contribution and everybody's treating each other like family. You know, I, 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 I'm sure they do that in other ways in other kingdoms, man, but here in North Shield, 
everybody's family. I mean, I, I, I would, I would do anything for anybody, you know, in this kingdom if they needed it. Well, I think you've answered the question, but I'm going to ask it anyways. What's the best thing? Okay. <laughs> All right. What's the best thing about uh, what's the best thing? Yeah. I think you just the best thing about North Shield. Um, well, yeah, I did. I guess um, definitely the family aspect of it. Um, and uh, and one thing that I think that uh, there was one question I think uh, you you mentioned the, that you might ask at one point about about the the, the, the quirks and all that oh, yeah. stuff about North Shield and whatnot. And that come, that's that's part of it also. But I think the two things about the North Shield like is that everybody is just so ready to be family with everybody else. You don't see a lot of the faction factionalizing and a lot of the clicks you might see in other social groups and other activities. People are very open and, and familiar with each other. And 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 I think that uh, another thing too. I think one of the reasons that that, that my my two favorite uh, 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 of our virtues. Uh, well, uh, my two favorite. You know, I, I actually had a, a fellow with a with, with a needle gun write those on my body at one point. But my two virtues are are, are courage and humility. And the humility with which we address things, you know, I mean, it's, I think that goes hand in hand with the, the family nature. It's like, you know, you don't take on airs with people in your own family. They know who you are. They know, they know where you leave your dirty socks lying around. You, you, you stay humble around them and all that stuff. And that's just, I mean, that, I mean, we, we are very, we conduct ourselves very humbly as a kingdom, you know, good cheer, great family, but Nobody, nobody tries to stand on top of anything and say that they're the best at anything. Everybody's very cool here. And, and, I, and I, I just like the fact that it feels like every time I go to an event, I'm going to a family reunion, you know, and I'm seeing, you know, cousins and, and, and brothers and aunts and nieces and stuff everywhere, you know, and it's just, and, and people come out of the woodwork to hug you and tell you about how things are going and it's the best, you know, that's, I mean, that's just so open here, you know, and, and not something that I've experienced as readily in other places, you know? I mean, maybe maybe that's something I, I might've missed out on places I've lived in the past, but uh, here it's so abundant. I love it. Yeah, I, uh, I felt it too, but I, you know, raining, I, like you said, you feel, you see a little big, whatever. And I was, you know, I was Prince and I went to Lupercalia and I took my youngest daughter with me and I was like, you know, it's a low key event and she can just hang out with me. And, you know, people came out and, uh, you know, just really took care of her and like, you know, we got this and, you know, like it was just amazing how well I wasn't planning on anyone, you know, taking care of my daughter and they was, they just, you know, just with open arms, just like you said, like family, it was like, it was a unexpected, but you, like you said, kind of, you know, like, oh yeah, this is North Shield. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. You know, it's just like, the fact, you know, just raising, you know, it's like when Liz came here, I mean, I, I, I know that she, uh, that, that the people, she, she's, she's, she's tons tougher than I am, you know, and so she's like, she was, like when people offered to do all these wonderful things for her when she first came here to, to live here, you know, we were, uh, we were dating when, uh, when uh, Gwyneth and I were reigning and all that stuff and everybody was like, oh, well, they were trying to take her off and do things for her and she was like, wow, this is a lot, you know, this is different than my experience in the SCA and it was really cool. She loved it, you know, and I think, I uh, think she, she, she really got to understand the, the magic of Norsha was, but the fact that I get to raise my kid, my daughter in the SCA is so reassuring. You know, that's the thing. That's the thing that I love most about the SCA. I have always loved the most about the SCA is I, you know, like my, my mom has worked for the university forever and, 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 and I've been around academia, you know, peripherally. And then, and then as a part of it, you know, when I became a student at the university and stuff like that, and, and my mom, you know, our house was always full of books. She worked, uh, she worked at the student library and, and uh, the university library. And, and, and so, you know, continually enriching yourself through knowledge and reading and all that stuff. My mom was an art history major. And so, you know, being around so many people that are still invested in enriching themselves and growing themselves intellectually and culturally constantly, you know, and people that are, that, that, that are, are some of the most polite, considerate people. I mean, what greater gift can you have as a community than being around people that are intelligent, want to improve themselves, and 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 are just so kind, you know, at all times. You know, you you feel you you feel safe with your kid anywhere. You know, so that's it's just wonderful. I I, I wish more people would understand that about the SCA out in the world because 
uh, we, we, we wouldn't know what to do with all the people participating if people really understood that about us. Well, again, thank you for your time. Um, yeah, sure, sure. Thanks for letting me prattle on. I haven't had a chance to talk my ass off about the SCA in a long, long time, and, and I think you gave me more than my opportunity to do so. <laughs> Until fate brings us shoulder to shoulder to stand as brothers again.